Hello guys, Antoine here for some architecture and welcome back to a new video. Today we're building a French inspired mega mansion, which itself is inspired by an actual mansion located in Los Angeles and the neighborhood of Homby Hills, which I think is one of the most exclusive gated communities in Los Angeles and probably in the US. And the house we're getting inspired by is the very, very famous spelling matter which belonged to Aaron Spelling, who was a um, TV producer who, for example, produced um, Bevel Hills, um, Dynasty, Melrose Place, I think, and some other iconic shows that were um, produced during the, the 90s. So this huge mansion, which is one of the largest built in the US, um, was built at the end of the 80s in a very elegant French style. So as a French, I'm always a bit um, skeptical about what Americans call French style. I mean, I, I can't recognize the influence, but you won't see much houses like those in, in France. They actually take some architectural elements that are quite usual in France, but not in regular houses, of course. Um, the most striking elements that you can find in those French houses or mansion is, for example, the, um, the roof, which is a mansard roof, where those um, sort of, yeah, geometries. What I think also may look French for American other are those um, what they call the French doors. These are, in French, we would call them um, window doors, which means they're both windows and doors at the same time. But in English, in proper English, we call it um, we call them French doors. And I think also what they think is French um, is probably the, um, the use of columns and some cornices elements, you know. So yes, this is a French inspired mega mansion, which I think is a very beautiful house. It's probably one of the most elegant and fancy that was built in this time. And still today, there are amazing mansions being built in Los Angeles, but this one is really over the top. And from what I read on the internet, at the time it was built, it was quite a big scandal with the neighbors because the house is much, much larger than the other houses. Just to compare, the house is larger than the White House in Washington. So yes, it's a massive house. And yes, it was, it was quite a scandal because um, it attracted so many people and tourists that wanted to go for a tour and see the house because it really became famous for its opulence and size. So yeah. Uh, the neighbors were not so happy and I can imagine they were quite jealous because you know in those neighborhoods in those gated communities it's just about um, showing who's got the most money and power so yeah so this house belonged to Aaron Spelling it was then um, sold after his death by um, his wife to a very rich woman, which I forgot the name. Um, and then it was sold for something like 100, almost 200 millions, I think. And yeah, so anyway, I'm not doing the whole story of the house. Um, just to tell you, this house is inspired by the spelling manner. Of course, have to adapt it to the game because I couldn't build everything I wanted. The wings are larger and there are actually other wings to the current wings here, if that makes sense. Um, the driveway is much larger and there's also a huge garden with a much bigger um, pool area with a pool house. Um, there are tennis courts, which is something I couldn't build here. Anyway, I think... I really got the vibe and the style of the house, especially with the driveway, which is um, one of my favorite thing in this house. It really took me a long time and you will see it in the speed build um, because 
do kind of draw the um, driveway. I used a trick that I found um, in a video made by Alex. He's a um, not so well-known YouTuber who does Sims videos. And he's currently doing a series about um, Kardashian's houses. And he used this technique using some... Um, these are actually carpets or rugs, which are which aren't real rugs because it's it looks like stone that come from get together. These are these little rectangle stone rugs, um, which I downsized and used as a way to draw the path and delimit the area and the path. So yeah, this is a trick I used and it took me a very long time. And yes. This is a technique I think I will use in upcoming videos because it's a really great trick, which I didn't see before. Um, so yes, the driveway is one of my favorite feeder. I really love doing the landscaping of this house. As usual, I actually prefer doing, I mean, building the house itself and doing the landscaping. I prefer it much more than the interior because the interior is always so... Um, time consuming because I really like to put a lot of details and quite repetitive, especially when it comes to the bedrooms and the bathrooms. So um, I think I could tell you a bit more about the floor plan, which was an actual nightmare because of the shape of the house, because the two main wings were or diagonal. And as you know, um, diagonal rooms are really a big struggle in The Sims 4, especially when they're connected to a regular part. I mean, not a diagonal, a straight part. So it was very tricky to arrange the rooms, but I finally found out um, how to do it. So there, there are some spaces which I lost because I couldn't do anything with them, but I think the house is big enough to, to enjoy it. Um, so there is, when you enter, a big entrance hall, which isn't that big, well, compared to a regular house, it's probably huge, but it's just, it has this size effect because it's very tall. It goes up to the roof and there's a beautiful um, glass ceiling with a view through the sky, which I really like, and the light is absolutely wonderful. Um, after that, there is a big corridor from which you can access to all the rooms of the first floor. You will then discover the um, formal living room, which just like the rest of the house um, is decorated in a very classic and elegant style. I didn't want this house to look tacky. Um, I wanted to have soft colors, black, white, beige, um, not, no aggressive colors. Um, I also wanted some beautiful pieces of furniture inspired by European styles. I didn't want something tacky. I didn't want this house to look like, um, well, I don't know, a Arabian prince mansion or something. You probably know what I mean. And I also didn't want it to look like a Mac mansion. So yeah, I really try to stick to a very classy and elegant style. And sometimes, sometimes it's a bit minimalistic because it's all about um, the architecture and a few pieces of furniture um, and yes so from the formal living room you can access um, to the outside of course to the big terrace from the french doors um, on one side there is a more intimate tv room living room family room call it what you want and on the other side there is the formal dining room um, on one side of the house, in one wing, you will find um, the breakfast room. Yes, I, I love breakfast rooms. It, I mean, when you have a breakfast room, it really means you're, it really means you're, <laughs> you're wealthy, um, because most of the people cannot afford to have like two dining rooms. Anyway, um, then you have another sitting area, which is probably more like a family room because it's not accessible directly from. The main hall so it's a more private room and then there is the kitchen which 
For once it's really nice, I have to say it because um, most of the time I'm not really happy with my kitchens and it's always a struggle for me to, to do something good, um, especially in a classical style. But this time I was happy even though it was a big struggle. Um, yes. In the other wing there is an office, there's nothing much to say about it, it's quite, it's quite simple. Um, and then there is the guest area um, with a big bedroom, a bathroom and a walk-in closet. And before going upstairs, I would like to tell you about the basement. Um, it was a real struggle to figure out how to access to the basement because when I built the house, I knew I wanted a basement, but because of the weird shape of the building and of the diagonals, um, I couldn't find the right place, the right spot to build a stair leading downstairs because as you know, the stairs cannot be popped in a diagonal way, so I had to, to find a trick and I actually destroyed toilets I built and put a stair in the very end of this big corridor I just told you about and it leads to a small hole, it's like a big oval room and from there you can access to um, a home theater, a cinema which actually looks like an actual cinema because it's very big um, and a big inner pool which kind of looks like the one I did uh, in my um, Gilded Age mansion. It's quite the same style and the layout is quite um, similar because I had to find a way to work in a quite small space because of the terrain and so on. Um, so yes, these are the two very cool features you will find downstairs. Now let's go up. Um, there are two, two areas, I would say. There is the private wing or the master wing, I would call it, because it's actually just a big master bedroom um, with a bedroom, which is a bit more actually, because it's very huge. Um, there's several sitting areas, fireplace, bed, um, sofas, etc. Then there is the largest bathroom of the house with a beautiful view on the garden. Um, there is separated toilets in a huge walk-in closet, which is very, very big. On the other side of the first floor, there is a library, um, which is also one of my favorite rooms because uh, you don't really expect to have a, a large library here. Um, I use the space in the roof to have two levels of library um, and there's sort of mid in with a seating area which is super nice. I was not sure when I built it because I don't know the, um, the layout was kind of strange but then I decorated it, put some architectural elements and it just worked fine. And then there are the, all the other bath bedrooms um, which are all um, real like they're really built like hotel suits, so that's why there are only five bedrooms in this house, which probably is not much compared to the whole size of the house, but I really wanted to have large bedrooms with, um, for each, a large bathroom and a walk-in closet. So they all have those fitters. And I think Yes, I actually told you everything um, there is in this house. So, um, as usual, you will need a 64 by 64 lot to put it in your game. Um, and you will need all the custom content linked in the description in the link tree link. Um, the link tree is actually just for the CC. So there are all the links to the creators you have to download the CC from. As always, I mostly used um, Felixander custom content, Harry custom content, or Harry and Alexander custom content because they also do um, common packs. Um, I also used a lot of um, Pierre Sim. 
and Mob Mortal, of course, for especially for its chandelier and uh, sectional library elements. And some other creators you will find in the link. And yes, so this video, this build, this mansion will be available under Gary, of course. Do not forget to activate the custom content in the Gary if you want to find it. It's very important, otherwise you will not find it, it will not appear in the results. Um, and yes, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I think I'm halfway through, so you still have about 15 minutes for the speed build and the screenshots. So I would recommend to stay until the end because in the speed build itself, I didn't show everything because I think the video would have lasted around one hour. So yes, just stay until the end to see all the rooms and all the amazing video of this house. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye. Pas de soleil, pas de soleil, pas de soleil, pas de soleil.